Welcome to a look at another 35mm SLR film camera and today I'm looking at the Leica R6.2 which is my most recent purchase and I've always fancied a Leica and I wanted to go for the R6 or 6.2 because it's the last mechanical uh, SLR they made. This camera starts production in 1988, it was then the R6, and it was produced then till 1992, and they changed it to a R6.2, and they stopped producing them in 1997. Uh, this one dates to about 1996. Uh, there's very little changes between this one and the R6 model. Uh, the most significant one is the shutter speed. The original R6 had a maximum shutter speed of one one thousandth of a second <clears throat> and on this one it's one two thousandths of a second. Uh, another slight change is to the exposure counter which was slightly moved and they put a uh, magnification glass over the number so it was clearer to see. So that's basically all the, the differences, but obviously like I say this was the last one, mechanical one they made, so this is the one I wanted. And I'm just going to run over its controls and features and uh, show it you with a, uh, a motor winder and a flash unit. This one comes with a 50mm Sumicron F2 uh, aperture which uh, is made in Germany. I do have another lens as well, a 28-70 uh, a 3.5-4.5 uh, which was designed by Leica but it was actually produced in Japan. So I'm going to mainly stick to uh, showing you the, the overview with this one. Now if you compare the size of this to one of Nikon's, in fact Nikon's last mechanical SLR which is the FM3A size wise they're very similar the sides of the uh, Leica are taller but if you take into account of the prism they're around the same height and the Leica is deeper as well you can see with the prism and the lens but are very like I say, similar size so it's quite a compact camera but weight wise, and this is where you notice it with the Leica, it's a very heavy camera compared to the uh, FM3A. I think that's down to the build quality. And that's something I, I really appreciate with this camera since I purchased it and you can't, you can't appreciate it by looking at it. But by actually handling this camera, uh, you can really see the, the finish on the metal and the build quality is exceptional and all the controls are nice to use and uh, just operate smoothly so it's a little bit camera to, to, to use I've, I've yet to run a, a film through it but that's my next project run a film through and uh, see what results I get so first of all I'm going to go over all the controls I'll start with the top plate and you've got the uh, advance film advance lever and the uh, it cocks the shutter of course and it does have a standoff position uh, but it doesn't affect anything to do with the meter or anything like that so say this is a fully mechan uh, mechanical camera which regards the, uh, the shutter speeds the firing of the shutter uh, but there is a, an exposure meter so it does have a standoff and it's a very nice standoff position it's, it's perfectly positioned when you've got the finger on the button and you've got the thumb under the advance lever it's got quite a wide advance but it's nice and smooth uh, operates nicely and it, it, say the advance lever feels very solid and for him um, so that's nice to operate. You've got, as I mentioned earlier, the exposure counter, which actually stops at 36. 
and if you do have a, a motor winder or drive fitted it will actually stop advancing the film and it gets to 36 here you have a, a film plane symbol it shows you where the actual film is lying and here you have the shutter dial with the shutter release in the center the shutter release is threaded so you can fit a cable release and the shutter speeds are from X which is for flash sync at 1 one hundredth of a second and then you've got B for bulb uh, where the shutter stays open while you hold down the shutter release and then you've got your time settings from one second all the way up to one two thousandths of a second uh, now there's no intermediate shutter settings at all uh, they do click into position and a feature I do like is there's no locks at all you can select any position on the shutter dial at any time uh, there's no lock position the shutter release itself has a um, when you first touch it it activates the meter a slight press and then you push it down fully to fire the shutter and get that lovely mechanical sound around this shutter dial is the uh, power for the uh, exposure meter and the setting of the exposure meter at the moment it's in off you can just see that in the window it says off and you have to press in the little button here on the end and flick it and you've got two different settings you've got a selective metering method which uh, it reads the light from the uh, seven millimeter reference circle through the viewfinder so it's like a, a, a spot metering or you can move on to the next one which is a integral metering which covers the whole field but is slightly weighted more towards the center and that of course which is the power onto the meter as well uh, if you've got it in the off position you don't get any lights come on in the viewfinder when you touch the shutter release so you can flick the camera to the one of the uh, exposure methods I've selected the spot metering and then when you slightly press the shutter release you get in the viewfinder uh, on the left hand side there is a uh, symbol which lights up showing you which exposure mode you're in and then next to that is the exposure itself which is represented by arrows and there's an arrow pointing to the right then a circle and an arrow pointing to the left and if the left arrow is lit the one pointing to the right uh, then the exposure is one stop or more out and if the arrow and the dot are lit together it's half a stop uh, and obviously if the circle is lit it's deemed to be the correct exposure now you can't make off step adjustments with the shutter dial uh, on this camera but you can with the aperture because the lenses come with off stop clicks so you can make a, a fine adjustment on that so going back to the top uh, oh sorry I just mentioned also in the viewfinder when you look through the viewfinder you also see the aperture which is uh, shown by this on the lens and it actually reads that through a little window and you also see the shutter speed Look to the right of that set so you can see everything you need to know for the exposure and what settings you've got on the camera there is a light as well so when it's dim uh, there's a little switch here at the bottom of the mount uh, that's in off and then you can flick that down it shows a little symbol to represent that when you press the shutter slightly uh, it lights up the display inside and you can see that as well by it lights up that little light on the nameplate 
obviously that does use more power. Speaking of power, there is a battery uh, compartment underneath which takes two of the uh, S44 silver oxide batteries or you can fit a 1-3 volt lithium battery as well. While on the base plate, I'll just show you the other things there, you've got a tripod socket, you've got uh, electrical connections for a motor drive, you've got the rewind button which is also used for multiple exposures, you've got the advanced crank for the connection for the motor drive or winder, and you've got a, another electrical contact here which is for the drive or winder to release uh, the shutter. Going back to the top, you've got a hot shoe which has a few contacts and it does provide through the lens metering for the flash and I'll tell you a bit more about the metering on this when I remove the lens. Going to the left hand side you have a ISO uh, button which acts as the battery check so when you press that in it lights the light and if the light stays steady like it is on the here it shows that the battery is well up to power if it flickers or dims slightly while you're holding it in it suggests that you should change the batteries but also this doubles up as I say is the ISO selector and what you do is you hold that button in and you can rotate the wheel at the bottom to show the either the DNA number or the ISO at the bottom, and I didn't uh, use now uh, 400 SA film. Above this is the um, exposure correction button, and you can press that in to make exposure compensation. And what you do is you, you move this lever here, and you can see in the window it adjusts in the window to up to plus to minus two stops in third steps. Uh, another nice thing about this is you can actually lock that button. So if you press it in and turn it slightly to the left, so it's angled like that, you can now make the adjustments without holding on to that lever. And another thing to note is if this isn't on zero, when you look through the viewfinder and you half press the shutter release, it shows you the uh, symbol on the left flashing to show that it's uh, not set to zero, which is an natural feature. Here you've got the rewind crank and lever, and again that uh, has a beautiful feel to it. And it's through this as well that you open the camera back. Uh, there's no lock button. You basically just grip, the rewind crank, lift it up, and then pull it fully open click open the back. On the back you can see there's a film window to show you what to make sure you've you've got a film fitted and show you what, what is fitted, what speed it is and how many exposures. A little grip on the back as well. The back can also be replaced. You can see there's a little catch here that releases the back, takes it off. You can put on a data back uh, called a DB2. Looking inside the back, they, these are the contacts for the, for the data back. Uh, you've got the serial number at the bottom of the camera. There's no DX coding on this, so even though it was made uh, 92, to, sorry, from 1988 to 97, the, the full series, uh, they didn't use DX coding at all. You have to set the ISO speed. You see the shutter, of course, and you can see the advanced crank and the film wind. And it's slightly different method of inserting the films on these cameras you they suggest you put the leader in first so you don't owe the cartridge this way put the leader in this way around so it at least goes under two of these slots and then you pull the film over back under the crank and uh, push the crank down and shut the back <clears throat> and that's the way to wind the film uh, looking at the front You've got the strap, lugs fit in a strap. You've got the model number, like a name, on the top and the side there. You've also got here a depth of field preview lever. 
That's a, it's in a beautiful position. It's ideal for position. In fact, when you're holding the camera, you've got the, your finger on the shutter release to nicely press that. Uh, it's a great position for it. Uh, but it does suffer from sticking slightly. Uh, in fact, if you press it right in, it will stay in. Oh, it's just flicked itself out. See, it does stick. Uh, but it is a known problem with these cameras and apparently it's down to the fact that the mechanism for the depth of field uh, goes under the mount and around and it's quite complicated and they just tend to get uh, overuse a slight kink in that leverage and it makes it stick uh, but I'm not really bothered about it, I can operate it ok so it's not something I'm going to worry about too much Here's the lens release button, and here is a self timer, uh, which again works lovely on this camera. Uh, while most other cameras don't use this type of setting, I don't know, but basically the self timer won't set at all if the shutter isn't cocked. Uh, you need to cock the shutter first, and you can set the self timer. You just flick it like that, and when it's using the self timer it does need batteries for the self timer so it doesn't defy the shutter but for the self timer it does because it it triggers it electronically uh, the shutter itself is mechanically control, uh, uh, operated but this actually controls it uh, electronically through the self timer and to start the self timer going you either slightly touch the shutter release so you're activating the, the meter or you can press the button on the exposure type control on the front so if you press that it starts to count down uh, I think it's about nine seconds and it goes steadier as it gets to the end to let you know the last two seconds but at any time if you're holding or sli sorry, slightly touch the shutter release or the button on the front it resets in it starts counting again you can also cancel it easily by just flicking that down, that cancels it, or at any time you can press the shutter release and fire it manually. So the way that works is, is perfect, uh, they've really got that spot on. Here is a, uh, a mirror lockup, uh, you can't say a button, it's a, it's a uh, socket for connecting a uh, standard cable release. It's better to show you this with the uh, mount off. And it's a very strange setup. Why they didn't put a, a standard type of mirror lockup button or switch, I really don't know. But uh, I've released the lens and I'll show you that working. So basically, you need a, a standard shutter release cable. You just screw it in. I say this ends like this. Now you can, like I do, make a very short, uh, like a little socket like this. It's about that long actually, which ends in a little pin that you can just press in to operate it. Now it doesn't do anything if the shutter isn't cocked. So I'm pressing it now. The mirror doesn't go up. <clears throat> but as soon as the shutter is cocked, then when you press this, shutter release puts the mirror up. Now I've got the mirror up I can show you where the um, metering is because the meters aren't in the prism on this camera they are in the base of the camera itself and the one in the center is the uh, exposure meter it's an SPD cell in the center of the base of the camera and that receives light actually through the mirror I'll show you that when I put the mirror down again shortly uh, what happens is as the light enters the lens 70% is reflected up into the prism and 30% is allowed through the mirror uh, it's actually got tiny holes in the mirror that let 30% of the light through that's reflected off a, another mirror and down into that uh, SPD cell in the base uh, and that does the exposure now if you have it set on selective or spot metering uh, it puts a little condenser lens in front of that as well to limit the area of the reading to the 7mm 
uh, reference circle as, it, as you can see in the viewfinder. Next to the exposure cell is the uh, through the lens flash metering cell as well because it actually reads the flash uh, light from off the film so basically when you take a picture with flash uh, the shutter mirror goes up obviously and the shutter opens exposing the film the light comes in the flash goes off and that cell reads the light reflected off the film and when it deems that the the uh, light is sufficient it stops the flash firing and then it uh, obviously shuts the uh, shutter curtain as well and puts the mirror back down it happens obviously very quickly and that's how that works I just let the uh, when you fire a shot the mirror automatically comes back down again you have to cock the shutter and press the cable in again to put the mirror up and you can now see if you look at this uh, mirror you can see reflection at the back the gold um, reflecting in the mirror and they say the light goes through that reflects off that to the cell that's how the exposure metering works put the lens back on right next thing to show you is a motor winder now this is a motor winder R you can get a motor drive as well this takes six batteries and provides you with up to two frames a second advance there is a motor drive which is bigger than this takes ten batteries and uh, gives you two or four uh, frames per second uh, advance uh, here is a a release on the, the front which uses the electromagnetic release for the shutter and this is contacts for a grip as well which I'll show you on the bottom you've got the mounting screw to fit this to the camera you've got a lever so you can actually select to use uh, a multiple exposure as that's uh, normal single exposure you've also got a represent a replicate tripod socket as well this is the battery compartment I just flick that Oops, sorry and that comes out and that's where you order the six batteries and uh, I suppose the beauty of that is you could you can buy a spare one of these rather than buy two drives so you can have a, a extra power on at all time so you don't run out of batteries fits in like that Okay, now to fit the drive, the best way I found to do it is to pull the lever out at the bottom and you should always have the advanced lever in the standoff position because that actually stops the power from the drive going into the camera. Then the best way I found to fit it is to, with this pin, locate that into the hole on the base first. And it quite easily drops into position so you can turn in the screw you don't take many turns to tighten it up and that's the winder fitted to the camera and then as soon as you put the advanced lever back it cocks the shutter uh, sorry advanced the film cocks the shutter ready for the uh, next shot to be taken so while in this mode uh, you can release the shutter mechanically as normal with the shutter release or you can use the button on the wind itself which fires the shutter electronically uh, and that's to two frames per second with the motor winder so as I mentioned before, the self timer does that as well. That fires the shutter uh, electronically, and the button on the motor winder does, or the motor drive does as well. And the, the way to think about it is if you press in the shutter release button itself, then the shutter is being fired mechanically, otherwise, 
it's been fired electronically. That's the way to uh, remember that. So for this motor winder, and I think the driver as well, there's a grip, which is this, and this attaches to the bottom here, fastens with a screw, and I'll just do it with my thumb just to show you. So that gives you again this release on the bottom of the winder two frames per second, but now you also have two releases on the top, you've got the standard shutter release which will give you a single frame or you can use this one which will give you continuous drive as well and as well that gives you, put your hand through and you've got a nice grip for the camera using that so uh, that's a nice addition to have again when you're removing the winder it's best to Put the advanced lever into the standoff position and you can release it with the grip fitted, you don't have to take it off. Just undo that. Let's take that off and just remember of course obviously when it's in that position the shutter is cocked so um, you can just fire the shutter. And that's one thing to bear in mind as well with this and I find it actually an advantage is the fact that at any time when the shutter is cocked whether the exposure meter is on or the advanced lever is put flush to the body at any time you can fire a shot just by pressing the button uh, so as long as the shutter is cocked at any time when you press that the shutter will fire and uh, there's quite a few cameras including the FM3A that doesn't do that because uh, on the FM3A when the advanced lever is in the flush position it actually locks the shutter so uh, this is something that's a nice feature of this camera another thing I can show you is a flash uh, now I say it does off offer through the lens of the film flash uh, and it, but for that it does need a suitable adapter this is a, a METS 44MZ2 flash uh, with the correct adapter for this camera or other like our cameras as well say SCA351 <clears throat> and that gives you the uh, TTL flash option but as well uh, this flash is a zoom head flash and uh, with suitable camera uh, like camera bodies you would get uh, auto zoom on the flash head as well and also you would get auto setting of the aperture uh, with Leica bodies that have a ROM and what I mean by that is if you move this lens these are like our ROM lenses with a uh, electrical set of electrical contacts which can take the information for the aperture and the setting um, of the zoom if it was a zoom back to the camera body but obviously this body being a mechanical manual body doesn't have the actual context itself in the body so obviously it can't give you those features on this camera so all you can get benefit is the TTL option of the flash so to mount the flash there's any other flash just slip it onto the shoe and tighten up the little nut at the bottom set the shutter dial the X position and again that puts it so it fires the shutter electronically uh, with the camera and it sets it automatically to one one hundredths of a second to switch this flash on you just use the little slider on the side to put it on it takes four standard AA batteries by the way switches the flash on and it will light up and the flash is ready and if you look through the viewfinder now you get a flashing symbol in the left bottom in the viewfinder to tell you the flash is ready and you do get uh, an OK symbol on the back of the flash if uh, it deems that it's got sufficient power to give you the correct exposure and the flash symbol flashes quickly as well to show you that as well um, I, th I think it says the flash symbol doesn't light up for two seconds then 
the flash power wasn't sufficient. So all you need to do on this really is set uh, the aperture of the lens. So I need it set to f5.6. So I need to set 5.6 on the lens itself. And then I can cock the shutter and I can look at, that will give me up to 30 foot distance. I can leave that set on 28 millimeter, uh, which is the widest spread of the light, uh, because I say it can't automatically adjust the zoom with this camera, uh, whereas other, uh, like the R8, R9, it would do that. Uh, but you could, you could, if you wish, set it to the correct millimeter of the lens. I could set it to 50 if I wish, but you don't need to. Uh, that is quite sufficient. And when you press the button, obviously it fires a flash. It says it's okay for that. Uh, this flash does feature a bounce option as well, so you can tilt the head to bounce it off the ceiling to give you a much softer light. Uh, but again, you've got to take into account then obviously the distance up to the ceiling and back down again rather than just straight across. <clears throat> so that's one thing to bear in mind. So, you guys, look at the Mike R6. I'll just check my notes to see if there's anything I haven't told you. Uh, oh, Things I really like about this camera, the build quality and finish, which I mentioned. The very bright viewfinder, it's very noticeable. The viewfinder is a lot brighter than, say, I've got a Nikon F3, which is known for a, a nice, big, bright viewfinder. But this one, when you look through it, is brighter. I would compare it to the FM3A. It's as bright as that one, because that's got a nice, bright screen as well. Uh, the exposure meter, uh, when you activate it, by slightly touching the, the shutter release or by pressing this button on the front it only activates then until you let go so if the shutter isn't cocked the meter is only active while touching these buttons if the shutter is cocked it stays on for 12 seconds I think that's a, that's a great idea that's giving the information when you need it most when you're ready to fire the, uh, the uh, button of course um, talking about the self timer Viewfinder, like I've told you about. Things I don't like the depth of field preview uh, lever sticks. Uh, you do only get 92% viewfinder coverage, you don't get 100%. That's not too much of a dec decrement. And it's an awkward way to raise the uh, mirror, as I mentioned as well. Um, I think I have to tell you uh, if you want to do multiple exposures, basically you press the button on the bottom. And then, so you can do that at any time, you can take a shot, just press that button, and then when you use the advanced lever, it cocks the shutter, but doesn't advance the film. But you also use this button as well, obviously, to remove the film at the end. Just press the button in again, it releases, it releases the cog inside, so you can lift up, rewind crank, rewind the film. So there you go, let's look at the Leica R6.2. I've tried to cover as much as I can about it. Uh, we'll just end by showing you briefly this lens of other lens I've got. If I can get it, I'll not fit it to the camera, but I'll just show it you. Uh, it's a 2870 uh, Vario. What do they call it? A Vario Vario Elmar R 3.5 to 4.5. So it's not very fast. It's got a lens hood fitted, but you can take that off. Focus down to 0.5 meters. Uh, again, off click stops, and this one has the um, ROM as well to fit into the later cameras. It's actually designed by Leica, but produced in Japan, I believe, by Sigma. So there you go. Let's look at the Leica 6.2. Thanks for joining me on this video, and I hope to catch you soon with another one.